Hi guys, Eric from mobilemusthave.com here, and today we've got a really interesting and exciting addition to the Peplink Max Transit series, which is our heat sink, which is exclusive to Mobile Must Have. Come along with us and we'll tell you all about it. All right, thanks so much for joining us, guys. And apologies, I don't have a, a Pepwave uh, Transit Series router with me today that doesn't already have the heatsink on it. Uh, for the most part, like everything at Mobile Must Have, we like to test things. And this actually has been in testing for over three, honestly, five months right now uh, in my personal setup, testing out how this performs, which is why it's already in its installed configuration. But let's just assume that uh, we're talking about the Max Transit device here without the heatsink on it when we start this discussion. So for the most part, people assume heat is bad for electronics and that's very much normally the case. Heat is not uh, typically good. And when you touch an electronic device and it's hot to the touch, that can kind of give you an indicator that maybe something's wrong. And it's a very common uh, complaint or just observation we get from customers in the Max Transit series. And we're going to kind of explain to you why that's not necessarily a bad thing. Now we can't go into like detailed specifications because that's all patented information, but we'll give you a kind of a high level here and that there is a a PCB board or a primary kind of circuit board that is inside of the case of the transit. And it is suspended on these sides here in channels in this hardened aluminum case. And this aluminum case does a really good job of conducting heat and pulling it away from the components inside of this device that make a lot of heat. Typically you'll see a lot of heat coming out of the modem modules um, that, are, that are responsible for communicating with the cell towers because they've got to actually output power for uploading and receive signal. And you'll also see a lot of heat coming off of the processors that are doing all of the routing or the movement of the packets and information in the firewall. They produce a lot of heat. Peplink was very interested in this transit series device in making that it very small, but also making sure that it's solid state, meaning that there's no moving parts inside of it. Moving parts like fans can fail. And when they fail, if the device was designed to work with the fan, the device can then overheat and it can fail. And because these devices are designed for police, ambulance, fire, commercial transit use, and other really high availability uses, they don't want moving parts in these devices. They want them to work with the fewest amount of components that can fail. All right, so back to those rails that we talked about holding that PCB or kind of that main circuit board inside of this device. Now, inside of this device, uh, the rails and all of those chips are basically suspended in midair um, across the side and across the bottom. Then Peplink creates a um, a situation at the top here where they adhere the PCB board and the components that are creating the most amount of heat to a heat sink that dissipates heat and then that connects to the case itself, turning the entire case of the device into a heat sink. So what that means essentially is that the device itself feels very hot to the touch because it's venting or pushing all of that heat from the PCB boards to the external case of the device, which allows it to then vent off into the air, keeping the components inside the device cool. The net effect of that is that the device can run at a high temperature, it, it, it's warm to the touch. Oftentimes we tell people, we're like, can you touch the device? They're like, yeah, like, well, is it you know, burning you? Or are you pulling your hand away? No, it's just very warm. Okay, then you're fine. If you find yourself in a situation where you're touching it and it's like hot to the touch, check your environmental settings. You may just have a situation where you don't have enough ventilation. These can run very hot, but in a situation where it's too hot to the touch, you may want to look at something like this and also make sure that if you're in a cool environment and it's still too hot to the touch, contact us because you may have an RMA situation where there's something going on with the device. But for the most part, if it's warm and yeah, it's warm, but you can keep your hand there, you're perfectly fine. So then why do you need a heat sink? Well, you don't, that's the short answer. Um, but a lot of our customers are interested in making sure that the device runs as cool as possible. And it's certainly not going to be something that hurts the device by improving its cooling ability and allowing 
allowing it to vent that heat more efficiently. If you're in a situation where you may have this installed in a cabinet or an upper area or somewhere where it's just getting a bit warmer, or if you just want it to run more efficiently, or if you're putting a lot of stress on the device by running a ton of devices and really pushing it hard and doing a lot of uploading and downloading, and you want to just run the device a bit cooler, which can potentially extend the device's um, life, then a, a heatsink might be a really low cost option for you to add to your mobile router. Okay, so what have we created or come up with here? So we have an anodized aluminum heatsink here, and you can kind of see through all those ridges that what we've done here is basically by creating this anodized aluminum heatsink that's the exact, pretty much the exact size of the transit series line, uh, we've inc vastly increased the amount of surface area. Each one of these little fins or vents is pointing up and there's ridges this way, and all of those surface areas allow the heat to dissipate more efficiently. Just like, you know, if you have crushed ice in a glass versus cubed ice, you notice the crushed ice can get the water much colder faster, that's because of surface area. And heat sinks work uh, very similarly. On the back of the heat sink, we've installed some thermal conductive tape. And this is double-sided tape that's specifically designed to conduct heat and transfer it from the device to the heat sink. As mentioned before, I've already installed one here, so I can't really show you a demonstration of how to install it, but it's pretty simple. This is a double-sided sticker. I typically use a razor blade, but you can use just about anything to remove this blue uh, tape that's on top of the thermal tape. I'm just going to go ahead and try to peel back that corner for everyone to see, and that will expose the white thermal tape that is below that, and that's ready to stick directly onto your device. So go ahead and you can kind of position it just like you see here, um, centered, it doesn't have to be perfect, and then go ahead and push that down on the device, and then apply pressure down firmly, center down to the device. Once that heat sink is adhered to the device, I'd recommend you just leave it out for, you know, 15, 20 minutes just to let the adhesion bond properly to the device before installing it in your permanent mounting location. We have not had any reports of these falling off as long as folks are properly prepping the top of the device. Um, but, you know, just for good measure, let it sit out for a little bit and uh, then it will be good to go stuck on there nice and sturdy. Thermal tape is removable, so you can remove this from the device. You'd obviously want to remove this if you were sending the device in for warranty repair. You don't want the manufacturer looking at this saying, what, what is on top of here? This isn't something we manufactured for the device. And you can simply pull that off of the device um, using like a plastic pry tool um, for, you know, basically a plastic pry tool you can pick up at just about any big box store. Um, I also find that if you if you if you slide them to the side a little bit you can actually dislodge that thermal tape to get the device open. If there's any residual adhesive on the device itself that's removable as well. That's where those alcohol swabs can come in nice and handy to get that off. And you could also use just a standard kind of non-aggressive uh, removal, like a, uh, like a 409 anti-grease cleaner or something like that that's not super, super strong. That won't damage the powder coating paint on the device if you, if you have to get the heat sink off. But for the most part, our customers put them on and then they stay on and they never think about it again. In terms of performance, if you mount the device down like this with the heat sink up, or if you mount it on its side like this with the heat sink off to its side and provide adequate ventilation area above it for the hot air gases to rise and dissipate, that's going to be where you're going to provide your best amount of performance. This way would be fine as well. Now, just to see how it would perform, I actually installed it in my RV up top, up in the front cap, probably in the worst possible place I could. I'll show you a little B-roll here of my installation, just to see how this would perform in high heat conditions. And it actually did pretty well. The heat sink definitely made a big difference in an environment that was pretty warm. Now, I tend to leave that cabinet door open. In my previous RV, the 2015 Integra that you saw a lot of videos that we did, I actually installed a cooling fan in that center a box that vented hot air off into behind the TV that's wide open, and that worked really well as well. Um, so you can mount this in this upside down configuration like this. It will work and improve things a bit, but I'd recommend not doing that if you can. Get it mounted on its side or like this just to maximize the amount of heat dissipation that you'll get.
when you get a heat sink, if you order it from us, you'll notice this big stop sticker that says, test your setup first before opening this. Uh, you cannot return heat sinks that have had the thermal tape already ripped off and have been attached to devices like this. So get your setup up and running. It'll work fine without the heat sink. And then once you're really feeling confident about your purchase and you like what you've got, you can go ahead and install this or return it if you don't feel like you need it. But I'd say if you already picked it up and you've got it, and your setup is working, go ahead and install it because it's certainly not going to hurt and it will improve the heat dissipation qualities of your PepLink PepWave device. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you have any questions, please hop over to mobilemusthave.com, click in the bottom right hand corner, and you can start up a chat with an expert with any questions about the heatsink or anything else. You can also email us at info at mobilemusthave.com. Or if you're interested in a consultation around what devices to purchase and you just prefer to do those sorts of things over the phone, you can do that as well. You can schedule a callback with an expert via chat or via email um, with those same contact information. Then we'll just uh, find a mutually agreeable time and get you in touch with an expert to talk through your options. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you on the road.